Good job. Yes. That's, that's really great. Okay, so we're looking at two. This is cap. Um, right here, right here. So that is wonderful. And then you felt the give. I get that the drill kind of sucks, mm -hmm. right? But you felt the give. And so you can feel that um, resistance, and that's exactly what you're going to feel. So they're always, if they're not sedated and they have issues or they're awake, it's, it's a scream you'll always remember oh, yeah. because so as soon as you push that flush in, that's what's painful. Oh. Sometimes doing the I.O. isn't that painful. Otherwise, uh, um, 56, uh, mid -axle. Correct. So on this mannequin, we're not doing fifth and sixth. We're going to stick to just the midclavicular. Um, on our purposes, we have size 14 gauge is typically what we're going to use for needle decompression. We also have those tactical spears, which um, are much more efficient, compact, better for our needle decompression. So what is the indications for us to do a needle decompression? Tension pneumo. Tension pneumo. What's a tension pneumo? Uh. He's gonna have uh, unequal chest rise, shortness of breath, could be unconscious, um, uh, could be trauma, could be non traumatic, all sorts of things. Okay. Um, could be JBD, could be tracheal deviation. I mean, there's most likely going to be that, but could. Okay. Eric, how would I know that somebody has? some kind of pneumo. What would be your assessment? Decreased breast zones on one side. Okay. What else, how would they compensate? Would they be tachypnic, mm -hmm. tachycardic? Mm -hmm. They might start getting pretty anxious, right? And they're breathing hard. Okay, go ahead and teach us about needle decompression. You told us what the indications were and how they would need to present. So now go ahead and show us how you would actually do it without doing it just yet. Well, that's harder. <laughs> um, so I'd palpate to find the second and third intercostal space, um, which is kind of hard on this mannequin. guessing it's right there. It's hard to actually feel anything. All right, so this is where we're thinking, right? This is your money shot? Sure. Okay, so before we reveal that, here's the collarbone. It's bone one, first intercostal space. Two, that might be it, but let's see where we're at. So we're gonna pull this, let's reveal. That's where we're at. It can be a little deceiving, right? Mm -hmm especially on mannequins. But think about real people and the extra tissue. Kind of to our point at lunch when we were talking about if we had extra adipose here, how do we find those landmarks? So we're gonna do our best. We're gonna bring this back down. Even if we had extra adipose, collarbones usually are pretty prominent. We're gonna find that, and that's gonna be our one. We're just gonna dip down, first intercostal space. Of course, I'm gonna have a little ramp, second intercostal space. Now I'm coming up on my third rib. There's the money, second intercostal space, midclavicular. Tends to happen as we kind of come and we use the shoulder as our benchmark and we kind of get thrown off. If I were to use from the side of the neck to the shoulder and said, that's midclavicular, here's my spot, right? I pull that over, all I'm doing is getting into a rib or the shoulder. So keep that in mind, don't use the shoulder as part of your landmarks. So that's where I'm going to say we're going to go. And there we are. So we're in and a little further here. Be careful. Is we're going over that third rib. So there's these nerve bundles that run across all of these ribs. So I find one first divot, second hill, second divot third rib, nerve bundles run right around that. So I'm just gonna ride that needle over that nerve bundle and then straight down. Typically 14s, I would find, I know that's my spot. I'm gonna ride that over the nerve bundle, straight down. You should have a whoosh of air. You pull that out and then you secure. <coughs> so show me where your collarbone is. I honestly, I don't feel anything that feels like a collarbone. I don't know if that's supposed to be the collarbone. It's okay, go over here. 
Collarbone. Collarbone. Give it. Okay. Now just follow it through. And whenever you lose place, come back to the neck and come back to that collarbone. Bone, divot. Bone, divot. Now am I in the middle? Okay, I got my divot. Am I in the middle midclavicular? Not based off the shoulder, but truly based off of clavicle. Mm -hmm. So now we start again. Divot. Bone, divot. You found your spot. You do your prep work. How can a partner help him? And not losing it? Not losing the spot. Could you mark it? Like you with could. A Sharpie? Yep, you could. So we don't really want to introduce. This guy's already sick, right? I don't really want to introduce. Like Sharpie. <laughs> marker. But yeah, what you can do is them. use a pen cap. There are other things. Just just, oh, just an indent. Indent, correct. Gotcha. Yep. Um, or the corner of fingernail. a. Fingernail. Yep. Whatever you need to do. But there's some prep work that you can help them, right? You, you may be finding it. All your supplies should always be out before you do this life saving yeah. procedure anyway, right? What kind of angle are you going to go into? So he's ready. And this patient is really going to struggle and you're going to have instant relief if you have a good gauge. And it is amazing when you're ready. With force, push down. Tell me what you're feeling. Do you feel resistance? Do you feel bone? No. Perfect. So when he pulls out, we're going to have shh. In these kits, pneumothorax kits, you have the 14, and then you tend to have some kind of stability measure here where this helps so this doesn't get all flimsy. Oftentimes, with the pressure of that pneumothorax, this catheter could bend in there. I think I've referenced before how I've had where I've had to line up four needles to try to let that air fully escape. To Josh's point earlier, remember he talked about how there might have been a hemothorax. Again, you have extra blood in the, in the belly and in the, um, this cavity here that's also creating pressure and pushing up and kicking off those um, catheters. So, do we feel like he's in the right spot? It felt good. Now, everybody so. else, you're his partner. We all are in this together, right? You might not have ALS at the end of your tag, but we want to make sure we're all in the right spot to support each other. So I want everybody else to feel where that should be and then tell me if you think we're in the right spot. And we'll see how many people agree. I think he is. Okay. Tricky, yeah? Yeah, it is. Okay, let's see what we got here, Josh. It looked good. It felt pretty good, yeah? I don't know. I don't know either. Let's see what we got here. So we're going to. I think it might be easier to move off this side. You know, Christian. Look at where we are. Yeah. Nice. We are in. Okay. Nice so this is actually really great. And so good job, Josh. Here's what I like about this, is that we, even in uncertainty, right? He doesn't have to be in the middle, middle of this. We start, these are these are lungs, okay? So this, we're, we've stayed further away from the lungs. We've actually did that hugging over that third rib, go over to the nerve bundle, and we're in that intercostal space enough to truly <coughs> release this. So, well done, excellent. Okay, we all see that and we feel good about it. So then that air will, once you get it positioned how you need it. So the divot goes over the tongue, right? So you go over, you go down. See this black line mm -hmm. right here? Yeah. That is supposed to be at their teeth. I don't know if I'll be able to do that with him though. Yeah, I don't think it'll go all the way for his teeth. Yeah. In mannequins, we might have to use the tube tamer to help support. Yep. Oh, okay. And then with this, you don't want to lose, you don't want it to come out, right? 
you let go, it's just, it's not going to come out. You'll just have to push it back down. Yeah. yeah it just slips off. So when we're doing this, a prep is to maybe have this already ready at place, right? Mm -hmm. So she had to take her, where was it, the airway? That's, that's the whole job is airway. So she would need to focus on that and you as her support partner to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, like this, hook this up. Of course, this is hooked up to oxygen, this is inflated, and then reform. What should you see here? Chest right and pump. What should you not see here? And go into the stomach. Right. Would you run that course, or would you? Is that a possibility with eye gels that you would get gastric distension? Yeah, if it's not uh, seated right. Not seated right, but what's the other contributing factor to gastric distension? Too much air. Too much air. She got all crazy, right? She got Ricky Rescue about it and started, right? Now we're going to start having gastric distension. Tuna casserole comes up. No fun. Okay, excellent. So, we'll go ahead and take that off with Jeff Kalen. Now, she taught you. I want you to teach us. Okay? Okay. See if that thing works better. That's IVIO. He is at some point going to decompensate. Right now, he's compensating with high karate pulse at 114. We're feeling it, we can, it's not just a monitor. We always wanna read the monitor and our patient together. So Josh is preparing for intubation. What else do we see on that, Josh? What kind of blood pressure? IO is complete. Um, IO is complete, okay. Is this supposed to be an invasive? Yeah, 24s are here. like useless on this thing. Um, and no. I have to go like super deep. But that's I haven't even gotten got a manual. flash yet. Okay. So, I don't think they, I, don't, um, I tried to change it. Because that one yeah, is changing at that. the moment. No. So, uh -huh. yeah, check, check the Oh, like an arterial? Yeah. It is. Check for the 18. Well, let's just pretend. Okay. I was trying to figure out what that waveform was. Either that or it's just not so, flashing. Yeah, that must so be arterial. I was trying to change this one, but it's only changing the arterial. So, we're going to pretend right now that this is. Okay. So, we have a respiratory of 28. We feel like that's kind of matching. All right, so this is what sure. we're seeing and feeling, whatever, okay? okay. We're gonna, um, this guy is eventually gonna get apneic, um, but right now we're just trying to secure his airway because at some point we're not gonna be able to secure this in any kind of longevity, right? All right, so IO is in, and we're working on a second access port here for IV. In real life, we probably just do bilateral IVs or an IO, depending on how long he is. Mm -hmm. Good. Did you have any resistance or issue with that I.O.? No. I went in clean. Good. Yeah. In normal circumstances, you would secure it and yeah. you would keep pressure or put a, some fluids on it if needed. Mm -hmm. So Kaylin's going to go ahead and secure an IV and then Josh, go ahead and you're in charge of the intubation with your partner. All right. Well, so we'd be pre-oxygenating. Um, that pre-oxygenation process lasts for about how long and what's the point of it? Well, uh, I would probably start doing that as soon as, well, I mean, we would be doing it as soon as we start breathing for him, but we'd really be going for it the, as soon as I actually start up for setting up for intubation. And it would kind of last about two minutes-ish. Ish. Yep. And the point is? Uh, buy me time to have them not breathe for two minutes while I intubate. Nitrogen washout as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's going to prepare prepare all these things for intubation to take this gentleman's airway. He's going to be paralyzed. We can throw a nasal cannula on here. This can just kind of go back onto the head, and we're pre-oxygenating this patient because at some point Eric's going to move off the BVM to not supporting airway, and we're intubating. <laughs> so, and during that time where we are not supporting airway, he's passively getting oxygen mm -hmm. here. And he completes that process of oxygenation and then does that nitrogen washout. It takes about three minutes. All right. <laughs> so that lube is sold. Probably. Yeah, I still don't know what I'm looking at. So it's going to pull so itself. Too deep, and you just busted his teeth out again. So we're <laughs> going to pull it out, and we're just kind of. This is okay. This it is has. part of the process. And this is on purpose, and I want you to just get a feel for it first. So I'm going to end up going in and sweeping that tongue, and I'm not burying it. I'm just doing a sweep, 
cheers. And I'm, then I'm gonna have to kind of cockeyed and see. So you own this, Airways in Charge. Mm -hmm. What would be the best placement for this patient? And get down in, in their business. Ramped, right? Yeah. Let's do gravity, do its work. Mm -hmm. You don't need to feel uncomfortable and get way down. Let's make this go up, which I think you can do on that end. You can prop your patient. So you move the patient to what you need, okay? okay? Does that help? Actually, maybe that helps. Well, anyway, I like them to be ramped up. Go under the shoulders. Under the shoulders. Because I don't need to go like this and then I'll start. It's already a stressful situation. You should actually be able to just do this with ease eventually, right? Yeah. So you're going to. They say it's supposed to. Even though we're. Do your best to kind of. Let's just see. So you're going like this? We're going to sweep and triggers. So do you see it before no. you stick there too? I see nothing. Can we move this one mannequin up here? Up on the bed? Then let you visualize. I guess they're you see it? Yeah. Are you good? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yep. In? Yep. Wonderful. So now that you can see, now that you know what to look for, now yep. try it yourself. Yep, and then go straight out. Just watch not to crank down the teeth. A little bit. It's a quick, oh.